there's just a little bit of love and reverence for Aung Suu Kyi. She's someone who's definitely fallen from grace internationally, but she's still Myanmar's greatest hope for democracy. Aung Suu Kyi was born in Myanmar, but she moved to the UK and lived in Oxford. But then in the late 80s, she returned to Myanmar to nurse her ill mother. And during that time, she got caught up in a kind of resistance movement. The military by that point had ruled for several decades, and she became sort of figurehead of this new democratic movement. She co-formed the National League of Democracy, which was her political party. She was then arrested and for the next 15 odd years was held and detained by the military. She was living under house arrest in this kind of crumbling mansion by a lake in Yangon. And she would make speeches about democracy over the gates. For like almost 20 years, she was this kind of real symbol of hope and the future. Her kind of election in 2015 was this just real turning point for many people in Myanmar. The things that she was seen as kind of being really crucial to doing in government was to help end a lot of the kind of internal conflicts between the various different groups within Myanmar. There are about six or seven ongoing internal and very brutal and bloody conflicts that are happening. She had always been seen as a person, the one person who would be able to actually bring about a peace process. The problem for the Rohingya is that they are Muslims in a majority. Buddhist country, and there is just a huge amount of Islamophobia and kind of anti-Rohingya feeling. Aung San Suu Kyi is from the kind of majority Buddhist Burma community who just feel like the Rohingya are infiltrating Bangladeshis who do not have any right to be in Myanmar, which history just shows is not to be the case, but that is very much the narrative. Her sort of, I guess, greatest downfall is was her defense of the genocidal actions of the military against the Rohingya in Rakhine State. I don't think there's ethnic cleansing going on. I think ethnic cleansing is too strong a, an expression to use for what's happening. It's a matter of people on different sides of a divide. She did not put herself on the line in any point um, to defend them because it would have soured her already troubled relationship with the military and also would have been quite an unpopular policy. She once said that she was a politician, she wasn't a kind of human rights activist. For the people of Myanmar, who are very unsympathetic towards the cause of the Rohingya, that in many ways is not of any resonance to them at all. And actually people are often quite supportive of the position that she's taken. The military took over in a coup in 1962 and they pretty much held on to power up to 2015. And they had actually done really, really well out of this transition to democracy. They get to a point 25% of the parliament, they get to have the most powerful appointments within cabinet. Money and investment have flown into Myanmar. The military interests have remained untouched. The military operation in Rakhine against the Rohingya is a really good example of this. There's no one holding them back. This is a coup happening in the Southeast Asian nation. Troops are patrolling the streets and a nighttime curfew is in force. It's been criticized as unacceptable and a serious blow to democracy. You know, what the military have done is they've overruled a democratic election under the fake allegations that it was rigged simply because they didn't win it. There is a sense that the reason this happened now is very much to do with the general, Min Ao Lang, the current leader of the military, seemed to be making more and more kind of moves towards political ambition during the last election, which was then scuppered by the fact that the military lost the election so badly. And so this coup enables him to basically hold on to his political power for the next year. They've done everything that they can to kind of control and maintain their power in Myanmar's transition to democracy. But the one thing they've never really been able to do is actually become very popular. The military will do everything in their power to try and hold on to power with some kind of sheen of democracy, which will make them acceptable and palatable to the international community. But my sense is that it will be kind of very hollow. The pathway democracy has been very kind of fragmented and troubled and, you know, it had been very slow, but it was there. And the kind of fallback to the old ways of military coup is, I think, just extraordinarily frustrating for the country.